Neil and I were quite excited because I got an email from my acquaintance Artem saying that it was possible to make sodium chloride blue. I mean a blue colour, not some sort of classification. And his recipe was slightly vague that you mix sodium chloride and potassium chloride and heat it until it melts. This in itself is quite difficult because the melting point of sodium chloride is higher than the melting point of a test tube. However, if you mix it with potassium chloride, you get a mixture which melts at a lower temperature than either pure sodium chloride or pure potassium chloride. It's a so-called eutectic mixture. So Neil mixed them together and started heating. As he started heating, the bottom part of the mixture began to melt, but the top part was still rather solid. So he used an extra gas gun and it got really hot and everything melted and the test tube, which was straight, began to bend. <laughs> Fortunately, glass does not have a precise melting point, so it still was intact. So the recipe says that once you've got the salt molten, melted, you need to drop in a grain of metallic sodium. Now, a grain was not very specific, so Neil chose a piece and I thought it was about the right size. We dropped it in and there was quite a bright flash of light. And it continued to flash. Sometimes it pulsed with light with a sort of orange colour, which is probably the colour of sodium vapour, like you see in sodium lamps, because the temperature of the salt was well above 500 degrees centigrade. Something's going on in there. Celsius, if you prefer. Once the sodium had appeared to dissolve, we could see that there was a bluish colour on one side of the test tube. We hadn't mixed it very well and Neil wasn't very enthusiastic about trying to stir it. So we left it. Once it had cooled, we needed to get it out. And as you might have guessed, Neil chose a hammer. and out came the sodium chloride, potassium chloride and sodium mixture. Once it was cooled down, it was obvious that the sodium chloride was slightly blue. So the experiment worked. There is still the, quite a lot of argument why the sodium chloride goes blue. One argument is that if you have excess sodium, you will have spare electrons and the solid goes blue. There's definitely some blue in there. Rather in the same way as when we dissolved sodium and liquid ammonia and it went blue. It's like ink. Yeah, yeah. So the sodium it wants to lose an electron, it wants to be sodium plus. It's much happier being sodium plus. The other argument, which is probably the more likely one, is that you make very fine particles, nanoparticles of metallic sodium, which are distributed through the solid. And these nanoparticles scatter light, so they look blue. When, at the end, Neil put some water on the sodium chloride, there was some fizzing. Presumably that was excess sodium that was left. I think that the experiment was quite a success. It wasn't perhaps quite as blue as we dared hope, but it demonstrates quite an interesting feature about materials. 
that usually we think materials have precise chemical formula like NaCl, but it is possible to make these materials with a bit more sodium or probably a bit more chlorine as well. And the properties will be different, in this case, the colour. So Neil and I both felt we'd learnt something. And of course, Brady always learned something. Dunk it back into the, uh, the cold bath just to stop all the ammonia from boiling off. So we've got cut some sodium up. We had a big lump of sodium, cut some bits off that, and we're going to put smaller chunks in. This is going to go in there. 